Hey everyone, welcome back to Flipside. I'm Sam with the analytics team. Today I'll be diving into our core cross-chain tables. Here at Flipside, we've got a lot of blockchains and each of the blockchains sit within their own categories. And among these categories, there's one category called cross-chain. So usually blockchains will have its own category, like Avalanche having its own, Cosmos having its own. But in cross-chain, data spans across chains, hence the name cross-chain. Explosion. <laughs> So there are three segments in cross-chain. One segment is called core, which are things that we feel are core to your analysis, like labels, metadata, prices. And then we have the Cosmos. It's really the IBC chains. So we've got your addresses, voting governance, validators as well. We've got cross-chain DeFi data on borrowing, lending, and swaps. Today, we'll be looking at the cross-chain core tables. And the first one that we'll be looking into is the prices table. So we have two prices table. We've got the easy hourly prices and the fact hourly prices. So if we just click on any of them, you can see the list of columns over here. Why it's fact is because we don't add additional information to it. If you compare it to easy hourly prices, we add additional information like decimals and symbols. So we will use this hourly prices table to compare a few tokens from Ethereum chains and also from the Cosmos chains. So what I usually like to do is see what data is in the table. So you do a select star from, and then you can use this button over here to add the table like so. And then let's do a limit 10. And this would run. And it will tell you what information you have. So you have your hour, which means every hour there'll be a data point of price. There'll be a token address and then, you know, symbol, price, and then what blockchain it is. My tip here is that you would go into Etherscan and get the token address for Arbitrum. So I've copied paste Arbitrum's token address here. So I can just say something like where token address equals to this. Now, if I run this by itself, it wouldn't work because the token addresses in our table are in lowercase. So you need a lower function over here, like so. If you run this, we should get the hourly prices for Arbitrum. Because we want to compare prices of a few tokens, let's limit the columns you want to look at. So first, I would want my hour column because that tells me the time progression. I would want my symbol because that just makes it easier for me to compare. And of course, I want my price, right? We do not have to do an average or a sum here because every hour, there will only be one entry for the price. So if we just run this, we would have the Arbitrum's price every hour. We want to look at these prices in the past one week. So we can do hour. And then something like current day minus seven. This gives us the arbitrum price last seven days. There you have it. If we want to include other tokens, we would include them here. So right now I've got arbitrum, right? And let's say I want uh, to include medic as well. So what I'll do is again, go to Etherscan, find for the medic tokens address. I've got it here. Separate the values with a comma, and then you would close your parentheses. And if you run it again, you would see that now we have two tokens. You can see Arbitrum over here. Lastly, we want something from Cosmos. So let's try to visualize this first before going deeper into the tables. So let's add a chart. I'll do a line chart. And in my x-axis, that will be my hour. That will be my time axis. And the y-axis will be the price. And because there are two tokens, I can use this group by value dropdown to select symbol. And we can see then a clear distinction of Medic versus Arbitrum. Let's try to dig a bit deeper into the hourly prices and see how we can get any Cosmos tokens prices into, into our query over here. So to do that, I will first need to put this query aside. And a useful tip is to do this symbol slash asterisk and you end with an asterisk slash and essentially it comments out your whole query you can continue you know typing your query at the bottom here so i'm going to do a select star again but this time i will put where blockchain goes to cosmos the main difference between EVM chains and Cosmos chains, especially in this table, is for EVM chains, token addresses begin with an OX prefix, whereas in the Cosmos chain, tokens begin with an IBC slash prefix, right? So these are your IBC addresses, and that's one way to filter for Cosmos chains. So you can do something like, instead of saying where blockchain is Cosmos, you can also do where token address 
use the like function and then IBC slash and then percent. It asks for the table to look for everything that starts with IBC slash and then the percent symbol just says, I don't care what goes after IBC slash. I just want all results that starts with IBC slash. If you query this, it will give you the same exact results as before. So let's pick a, like a token from Cosmos and let's try to go with handle, right? So I'm going to filter where blockchain is Cosmos. And because I don't know the token address, I mean, I think you can look it up on something like a mean scan, but we're just going to try to use the symbol function here. So and symbol equals to handle and we will get any. Okay, we did. So one caution I would say when using the symbol is that especially in the EVM chains, any token can have the same symbols. So always make sure to use the token address. In this case, once we've got our token address here, we can sort of copy this into mean scan. Another way is you can do a distinct token address like so. And this will show you like how many addresses have the symbol Kanto. And if it's only one, then you, you will be sure that this is indeed the only address for Kanto. So now that we've gotten a token address for Kanto, we can plug that back into our original query to compare the prices between Arbitrum, Matic, and Kanto. So I am going to uncomment and by removing the slash asterisk symbols. So make sure to copy this whole thing like so. I think we're good to go. We've got Matic. I'm going to scroll through the results. Okay, so it looks like we're not getting the candle token in our results. Let's try to troubleshoot what's going on. So again, we can do the asterisk star to comment out your query. Or you can select all. And if you're on Mac, command slash. And it will also comment out. So let's try to recreate our query from earlier. We need to get Tanto's price again. And we'll see what we're doing wrong with the token address. So another thing I want to try is whether we're getting the latest prices for Kanto because in our original query here, we're only filtering for the past seven days. I would say order by, order by our descending and that gives me the results in a descending manner. So I'm noticing that it's taking long and it's because it's trying to get all of Kanto's prices, the whole table and trying to like reorder it descending order. So I can actually optimize this query better by filtering for a specific date. So let's say we only want data for the past seven days so we can actually say like put the hour filter here and says okay let me just show me the past seven days and then order it and if this gives me no results that tells me that there is no canto data for the past seven days and you can you know experiment with seeing how long the data is missing okay so in the past 30 days there is data so in this case maybe i can say i want to compare the prices between two specific dates so because i see that there is data here for 17th of April. So maybe I would do like 1st April to, you know, 17th April. And how I would do that is I would use the between function. So let's try to copy this back to our original code so that we can have a proper comparison for all three tokens at once. So I'm going to uncomment this part again, comment out my troubleshooting query, copy my timestamp filter. Instead of the past seven days, I'm going to look at two between dates. And this should give me Kanto. There you go. So we've got Kanto, we've got Arbitrum, and we've got Matic. Nice. So the line chart again, same thing. We are comparing the prices between three tokens. So our x-axis will be our time column. So our y-axis will be our price. And this will be grouped by the tokens. In this case, symbol. And there you go. We have a price chart comparing prices between blockchains, right? We're looking at arbitrary matrix tokens, which these are the Ethereum versions. And then our Kanto's prices, which is like a token in the Cosmos ecosystem. And, and that's how you query token prices across blockchains using our easy hourly prices table. Feel free to explore further in the tables. Thank you so much for watching. Drop your comments in the comment section and I'll catch you all next time. Bye.